What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Cal and today we're back in the Elder Scrolls Online to check out the new city of Gonfalon Bay. I wanted to do a preview of High Isle, which of course is bringing new sets, overpowered mythics, two new companions, and the new Tales of Tribute card game. But other creators here on YouTube have already covered all of those topics, so today I wanna to talk about the important stuff. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at that content that really matters, housing, furnishings, and city planning. That's right, I've been exploring the city of Gonfalon Bay on the PTS, and there's a lot to like. So here are my favorite things about the new hub, and why I'm going to be calling it home on most of my characters after High Isle drops in June. First off, it's a small thing, but they've moved the Stable Master back inside the city. You may recall in uh, both Leowin and Solitude, the Stable Master is actually outside the city walls, which means that if you've got a character that you just want to park inside the city, and log in daily to do your daily writs and get your stable master training done, you actually have to go through a hard load to get outside the city and complete your training at that stable master. In Gonfall on Bay, that stable master is back inside the city. So after you're done with your daily writs or before, you can just hop over to the stable master. You don't have to go through a hard zone point. And I think that's a huge quality of life improvement for those characters. We're still working on leveling up their riding skills, but you want to get those daily writs done as well. Even though Leowin and Solitude were both pretty cool cities, I think most of us stuck with either Rimen, Vivek City, or maybe Alinor. It's just for the convenience of having that stable master. Of course, for characters that didn't need to do any more training, I did end up moving them to Leowin just because I liked the aesthetics of the city, and it was a nice change of pace from Rimen. Second, We've really got to talk about the views here in Gonfalon Bay. I really like the verticality of the city as it allows you to get above some of the buildings and above some of the city walls. You're not just feeling totally enclosed by the rest of the city. You can actually look out and see towers and spires off in the distance or that great big statue out in the bay. And that's not just an aesthetic bonus, but I think it actually makes the city feel larger and more immersive which is a great thing. I definitely liked Leowin as a city, but I think opening up Gonfalon Bay in this way is a nice improvement. It definitely gives the city a nice vibe and makes it feel larger than it is. Which brings me to the next thing I love about Gonfalon Bay. And that of course is the city layout along with the crafting station arrangement in particular. Now, the crafting stations are tucked inside a building, which means you're gonna have to go through a door to get them. And I realize that this may be a fairly contentious point for any of you out there who do suffer from slightly longer soft load times. To compensate for that, the writ boards and the writ turn-ins are right outside the building. So when you're going to do your dailies, you're picking up the writs right outside, you're hopping through that door, all of your crafting stations and the outfit station are just inside that building. And then if you go out the back door, you just have to jump off the ledge and the writ turn in is right there. For anyone who can't load into this building quickly, Gonfalon Bay may unfortunately not be a good replacement for Rimen or Vivek City. But if that door isn't a problem for you, then I think the proximity of the writ boards and the turn in make Gonfalon Bay one of the new top cities to park your characters at and get your daily writs in. The crafting station area along with the guild traders are both close to the inn and the new notable home in the city. Either home would make a great addition to your collection as they provide great access to the amenities of Gonfalon Bay. So let's talk about that new inn room. The ancient anchor berth is a clear winner in my opinion with about as much square footage as the Golden Griffin Garret in Allen now, the, the ceiling height is a little bit lower than the Golden Griffin, but there's still plenty of room for you to build a second level or a loft if that's what you're going for. That square footage does make it one of the largest in-rooms when it comes to the square footage, which means you've got plenty of room to spread out in comparison to some of the smaller in-rooms like Mars Kiss. I also appreciate that it's got a traditional rectangular shape, which is going to make it easy to decorate in my opinion, but it leans into the asymmetry that is pretty common throughout the city. So you've got that large window on one wall, off center and you've got another off center smaller window on a second wall. I won't be tempted to try and force some symmetrical design in here like, like I was with Pilgrim's Rest. It's also only on the second level of the inn. So while you do have to go through a door to access the rest of the city and the crafting areas, you only have to go down one flight of stairs, which isn't as bad as some of the other inn rooms in the game. Like I mentioned a minute ago, the ancient anchor berth is located right in the middle of the city next to the way shrine. It's a very short run to the writ boards and the crafting stations along with the guild traders and everything else that you're going to want to have access to in Gonfalon Bay. As far as in rooms go, I think only the sugar bowl suite in Rimen provides better access than this one. But I prefer the aesthetics here and I think this is going to be a fun one to decorate. Next, we've got a new notable home right inside the city. Now, I'm guessing High Hollow Hold might be a Crown Store exclusive, which is a little bit disappointing if so, but generally speaking, notable homes aren't necessarily found inside these hub cities, which really hurts their functionality. In the last two expansions, we did get a large home inside the new capital city, 
uh, of course, Proud Spire Manor in Solitude and Water's Edge in Leowin. But neither of those homes was considered notable and they each offered slightly fewer furnishing slots than the new High Hollow Hold does. Of course, you could purchase them with gold after you completed the zone story. I'm still holding out some hope, perhaps naively, that High Hollow Hold will follow that pattern and just be a larger notable home by completing the story and spending some gold. Finally, I'm just really loving the aesthetics here in Gonfalon Bay. The new buildings and architecture they've created for High Isle are looking great. There's definitely a little bit of riffing on the Leowin style of furnishings and decorations, but I'm okay with that. I thought the Leowin style was well done and I appreciate the adjustments and the warmer wood tones that they're using here in High Isle. They've also done a pretty good job of placing those decorations, furnishings, and NPCs throughout the city to really bring it to life. It still feels a little bit sparse in my opinion, but it's definitely got more life than Central in Southern Elsewhere and Leowin in Blackwood. I think it's about on par with Solitude, which also had a good feel in my opinion. Also, don't forget to look up. Those banners waving in the wind from the tops of the spires throughout the city really add a lot. So all in all, I'm pretty excited to move my characters over once High Isle drops in June. It's great that we've got a new hub city with a lot of functionality built into it, which makes it an easy decision for me. I do hope that one day we do get that goat crafting hub where not only are there writ boards and the writ turn-ins right next to the crafting stations, but we don't have to go through any doors to get to the crafting stations themselves. I also wouldn't mind another open air bank I do, of course, have the banker and merchant assistance, but that doesn't allow access to the, the guild banker or the guild trader. Vex City got so close, but for me, having the in room and the outfit station on the other side of the city, along with the fact that Vex City is uh, basically a construction zone, just make it not a pleasant place to be. So while the accessibility and functionality are high, if you care about messing with your character's outfits or using a home to get back to the city quickly, it doesn't work well. But I guess that's just how it is, right? Every city's got some trade-off in the Elder Scrolls Online. And I'm just happy that Gonfalon Bay is a step up from Leowin and a step up from Solitude, at least functionality-wise. All right, guys, I'm going to call it here today. I hope you enjoyed this quick preview of the new city of Gonfalon Bay along with its amenities. And I hope you're looking forward to the new High Isle expansion as much as I am in June. I will be sharing more home and character design soon, but until then, bye for now, everyone.